Hi guys, welcome back to another video. And um, the last video, it was a vlog. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the last video. It was a vlog, like I just said. And um, today, welcome back to another video. And today, we, we are doing something different. We're doing reaction video to... We're going to do something new. Tell me if you like this at the end. I'm going to do the... The intros and the outros really quick, then because uh, this video is about getting my reaction about videos. So, yes, yeah, so today we're watching a reaction by uh, this is basically if you're wondering, as you can see, what's at the top? So, it's by Lana Arts. Lana Arts, um, this uh, Lana Arts, um. Mr. It's like by Mr. Nightmare, but the cartoon version of Lana Arts. Um, it's 31 minutes compilation, so it's like videos all together, and it's 30 minutes. And um, I've got my popcorn. You already know, hooking it up with the nice popcorn, nice seasonings, nice, nice flavour. And um, it is. Um, Toffee popcorn, so yeah, that's nice. And um, yeah, let's get into today's video. And no, let's get into the reaction. Here, here we go. Sit back, relax, have your popcorn, and turn off the lights. So, here we go. Let's go, guys. You can see some weird things when you're tired, but the thing about this story, I wasn't tired. Me and the family were on vacation to some resort in a very rural area of Pennsylvania to make the setting creepier. There weren't many young people there for me and my brothers to hang out with. It seemed like more of an adult resort. But then one day when I was walking outside of the main lodge of the resort, I for some reason looked up to a window on the second floor and saw a teenage girl looking down at me. From that distance, she looked kind of cute, so I gave her a wave. She didn't show any sign of reaction, so I just moved on. However, later that same day, I was so bored that I was sitting on the swing set at the little playground of the resort, and that's when I saw the same girl again. She was a little ways away from me, down past the playground, close to the tree line, and she was just standing there, staring at me. Being a teenage guy, my hormones controlled my body. And so I got off the swing and began walking over to her. As I started getting closer to her, I realized she wasn't as cute as I thought she was. There was something about her face that just gave off a creepy vibe. Why? I can't put my finger on it. But Why? if I had to say, I think it would have to do with her eyes and her mouth. I'd say once I got about halfway over to her, she turned around completely and ran into the woods. And I mean, she Creep. full on ran into the woods. Creep. I stopped in my tracks, completely turned off. This girl seemed like a freaky stalker. I didn't see her the rest of our stay at the resort. During the car ride home, miles and miles away from the resort, I was thinking about her. How maybe if I followed her into the woods, I could have gotten laid. Even though there was something off about her face. But then what I saw next made me feel like my heart dropped into my stomach. Looking down ahead, I saw the same girl standing by the tree line on the side of the highway. Whoa. As we sped past her, I saw her head turn she's so that she was always looking right Creep. at me, Creep. even through the tinted minivan windows. I asked my parents if they saw her, and they just responded, Saw who? Soon afterwards, I accepted that it was all in my head. And that the girl was never even there. What? Weird, that was the first one in. Hmm. Next one, I hope you enjoyed that one. Got lobster. There used to be a pond about half a mile away from my old house that I would commonly go fishing in. It was nicknamed Daryl's Pond. I still have no idea who Daryl was or why it was called that. But nobody owned it, so people would once in a blue moon go fishing there as well. It was usually me by myself, though. I had dug a pole into the ground where I would tie a noose to and from my small kayak. Okay. I'd say it was about three in the afternoon when I rode out to the middle of the pond, Why? 
the sweet spot for getting a decent catch. Why? There was another person coming out from the trees. Why? I waved at him and gave him a smile. He hopped into a small boat floating by the edge of the pond and began to row over to me. <gasps> As he got close enough where trying to speak to him wouldn't come off as obnoxious, I gave him a friendly, perfect day, isn't it? Yes, Good day, my lad. He said. He didn't say anything after that, and I started to feel a bit awkward, as if I were obligated to keep some kind of conversation rolling now. So, uh, you come out here to throw some lines? I asked. No, I don't actually don't fish. Don't speak to strangers like that. Oh, well, it's never a bad day to relax on the pond, I said. He continued to row closer to me until his boat collided Creep. with mine, creating a big thud. Creep. I was genuinely uncomfortable now. She? I didn't feel threatened, just weirded out. I was only 24 years old. This guy looked like he was late 40s or 50s. Yeah, he didn't smile. There was an awkward silence. I tried to just act like I was focused on trying to make a catch. But by now, that wasn't even on my mind. This guy was weird. I didn't know what he wanted, and I was uncomfortable being so close to him. I felt him looking at me, or at least in my direction, as I faced halfway to the opposite direction of him. I took a quick glance to my right. Yeah. He was staring at me. I decided to be ballsy and lock eye contact with him. After about four seconds, he looked away. So, uh, where are you from? I asked him. Up there. He pointed behind himself in the direction of the woodsy hill leading past the dirt road. Oh, oh you live by Suffolk? I asked. Uh, no. No, I'm not, he said. What made you decide to come out here? I said. Why not? I continued to try and uncomfortably fill the awkward silences that kept coming up. His responses were dry. He didn't contribute anything to what was barely a conversation. He just sat there, not doing anything, with half a smile on his face, looking either at me or in my general direction throughout. I was creeped out. My heart was racing at this point. I go as far as saying that I was nervous for my life. We were surrounded by trees in all directions, in the middle of a pond. I started to row a bit closer to land, but in a very low-key kind of way, trying to play it off as me just trying to find a better spot to find some fish. I was horrified when I saw he was following me. What a great day, huh? I felt a shake in my voice. I got close enough to the edge of the pond where I finally told the man, I think I'm going to call it a day. I turned to see his reaction. He was still staring at me, but his smile was gone. Go! Go! I can't let you leave, he said. He lifted his flannel to expose a handgun sticking out of his jeans pocket. As soon as I could process what I was looking at, I dove out of the boat for land, ran the whole half mile uphill back to my house, and locked every door as I made it home. I pulled down the blinds to the dining room window, leaving it open just a crack for peeking outside undetected. It started to get dark out, and I left every light in the house off, still peeking out to the front yard, making sure I wasn't followed. The time came when I finally decided I wasn't followed. I realize now, like you, that not calling the police immediately was a huge mistake. I kept my bedroom windows open to let the room air out. My bedroom was on the second floor, so I wasn't worried about being watched through the window. About half an hour after shutting the light and falling under the covers, I heard the sound of leaves crunching from outside. That's great. I sat up to hear it more clearly. It was definitely something walking around out there. Sam, Sam, well, minute, it's got be. It was a deer or a bear. But after what just happened, I, I was still oh, in paranoia ass. mode. I sat up as still as a statue, except for my shaking out of fear, waiting as the sounds of the steps stopped. Sim. Hey buddy, you up there? Are you trying to sleep? See? Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. I felt like a hundred pounds just fell directly onto my chest. It was the same voice. I knew it right away. I didn't make a sound. I crept out of the room, quietly downstairs to the kitchen and grabbed the phone, practically crawling on my way out to avoid being seen through the open blinds. I called 911 like I should have earlier in the temporary safety of my bedroom. 
I made sure to whisper into the phone as I was still hoping that he hadn't yet heard or spotted me. Twenty minutes felt like an hour as I sat behind my bed, waiting for did. the police to arrive in constant fear that I would hear glass breaking from downstairs or a thud that on the back long, door, it's not good enough or even for the just police. a voice again from down below my window outside. The police did a thorough investigation of the property in nearby woods, turning up nothing. They suggested I stay with a friend or a family member for a few days. I suggest you move. I never what? heard from or saw the man again, but I still moved a month later. Mum, deal with the constant fear and paranoia of being watched through my windows. More like day later. I feel much more comfortable fishing out by the bay now. That was scary. How long? Nine minutes in, so we got 20 minutes, guys. I was out doing a delivery one late night. It was probably the longest drive I have ever taken for a pizza delivery. From the pizza place I worked at, it was a 20 minute drive, which isn't too crazy out where I live. Plus, they ordered four large pies, so I figured it was a party and I would get a much bigger tip. Navigating the dirt roads at night was always annoying, though. So I pulled good. up to the given address. It was some old, so sketchy-looking building, literally in the middle of a forest clearing. There were no cars parked anywhere, or any lights on. I put my car in park and called my boss. I asked him to reread the address at least three times to make sure I typed it in right, but that checked out. I could tell he was in a really bitchy mood and he told me to at least knock on the door and check it out. He would normally get mad if we took back one pie, but I was afraid of what he would do if I brought back four. I was insanely unnerved, but got out anyway and forced myself Wait, to the front door of the building. There was no doorbell, so I just knocked really hard. I heard nothing and didn't really expect to hear anything. I was extremely disappointed. Not because nobody answered the door, but because I was realizing that it was all a waste of time and gas. I knocked one more time out of desperation. And then began to hear some kind of rustling noises from inside of the building. I knocked again and yelled that I was the pizza guy. There was silence now. I felt a bit more uncomfortable now than before. But before I could turn around, I noticed something at the window. There was someone looking through the window. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. These were their eyes. Their eyes were open wider than I knew possible, staring intently at me. I was disturbed enough by this, and dropped the pizzas, and ran back to my car. The shitty thing wouldn't start until turning the key for the third time. I drove off the grass and back onto the dirt road, but I felt the car rocking about, shaking and bumping. Something wasn't right. I didn't make it far from the building before I started hearing a sharp, scraping sound coming from outside. There was so much resistance that I couldn't even drive. The car came to a stop. I got out of the car to check what the hell was wrong. A chill ran up my spine. No so man's I began to feel like my heart was constantly no skipping man's beats. Land. My tires had been slashed and had completely fallen off the rim. There you Not go. Not just the front though. There you go. All four tires were slashed. I realized somebody did this when I was knocking on the door to that building. No Instead of running, I got back in the car and locked the doors. I was so close to that building, I could practically see it from where I was, if it weren't for the trees blocking the door. Oh. I dialed 911 and explained everything. Right. She told me the cops would be over as soon as possible, and that I need to stay hidden. I asked her if it was advisable to stay in the car or run, and she told me it would be best to stay in the car with the door locked. She asked me to stay on the line with her until the cops arrived. My whole body was shaking. In all directions, there was nothing but dark, seemingly endless forest. I knew it would take forever for the cops to get there. 
I was not comfortable with sitting in that car so close to whoever did this. The next part, though, is what utterly destroyed me. It still shakes me to this day, and I hope nobody ever has to experience this kind of fear. As I was scanning all the windows, making sure nobody was outside, I looked in the rearview mirror, and there was the same person. The same person I saw at that window. Eyes opened wider than ever. I could see now that it was a woman, and I could ever so slightly see a smile. I opened my door and full on sprinted into the woods, not caring how much noise I made. I ran until I was out of breath, which didn't take long, and I hid behind a giant log on the ground. I tried to cover my loud breathing with my hand as I waited and waited for what felt like hours until I finally heard sirens in the distance. I gathered up all the stamina I had left to run all the way back in the direction of the dirt road. Eventually, the glowing red and blue lights came into view. Thank God! And I had never felt better in my life. They were parked in front of my car, investigating with flashlights. I came out yelling at them like a lunatic to help me. I fell to the floor and started to gag, almost throwing up from running so much. They picked me up and began to question me, to which I explained everything to the best of my ability. One of the two cars drove over to the building, and the two officers began to search the building. They came back with nothing they find except nothing. for a couple of spiky objects. Thank These God. objects were exactly the same as the ones used to slash my tires. The cops guessed that it was some kind of sick, demented couple, being that I saw the woman. But unfortunately, they were never found. And that still kills me to this day. I obviously quit my job right after that and started working at a local grocery store. Oh. I know that I'll never forget seeing that woman at the back of my car. Oh no. How do you like this um, fitness office? I recently one? moved out. And I already have a horror Not story sure to tell. Now. The house I moved into isn't anything impressive. It's just a house that's appropriate for one or two people. But I'd say right away, I started hearing weird sounds coming from inside the walls, heard it in the kitchen, and then in the bathroom. A uh, how? On night three, I started hearing it in my bedroom. I was sure there was some kind of animal living in my walls. I just had to figure out how to get rid of it. The next morning, I didn't even have enough milk to fill the bowl of cereal. The hell? I couldn't believe I hadn't realized I needed more milk. Uh -huh. In fact, I seemed to be eating up all of my food pretty fast. I woke up in the middle of that night to the sound of breathing. Not my oh. breathing. It sounded just like the breathing of a person. Oh, hell no. I flipped the lamp on and hell it stopped. No. I chalked it up as my mind playing tricks on me after waking up. You're messing up. You're the up, next man. day was really hot, so I turned on the AC for the first time. I checked every single vent, and some of them weren't blowing any air. Someone's gonna One pop out. One of them out, being the vent right next to my bed. I peered through the vent with a flashlight. There wasn't even a duct behind the vent. It was just the inside of the wall. It seemed that whatever air duct was in there had been removed. Style. Unfortunately, I didn't look into the air conditioning system while buying the house. So I didn't know about this. That night I had to sleep in the heat with no AC. So I was up pretty late, constantly rolling around and flipping the pillow over. Then I eventually started to hear the breathing again. But this time, I was fully awake. I knew it was real this time. It was coming to my left. I looked to my left at the air vents. The sound was surely coming from in there. <laughs> the flashlight again and shined it in through the vent. I dropped it and screamed. There was someone's face peering through the cracks of the vents. I saw where their eyes opened wide and glowing. I screamed all the way down and out the house. I soon found out there was a crazy, dangerous homeless man living in my walls, and he had been eating my food ever since I moved in. Oh my... My God. In the walls! In the walls! <laughs> Somebody's in the walls, guys. What? Hope you're enjoying it 
so far everybody this video this reaction video Different, I was doing some night hog hunting in the woods near my backyard. Go, I was hiding in the tower I built about a decade ago. In case anyone's wondering, I of course had a night vision scope attachment. I guess I'm what you would consider a hardcore hunter. I don't want to bore you with the unnecessary story prolonging details, so I'll make this short. And I want everyone to know that though I agree this story sounds far-fetched and crazy, it is nothing but the truth. And I, in a way, actually consider myself lucky that I'll always have such a horrifying story to share. So, while I was sitting in the tower waiting for movement, it finally came. I took aim and found the source. But it wasn't at all a hog, or any kind of animal I was expecting. It was a person, a man wearing all black. Black sweatpants, black shoes, and a black hoodie with the hood over his head. But that wasn't the freakiest part. He was dragging a sack behind him. My heart started racing. I was pretty sure I was witnessing this guy trying to bury a body. I continued to watch him. But then he slowed down. And I swear to God, it looked as if he turned his head up to me. I ducked down under the wooden walls of the tower, shaking in my boots. Yes, I had a gun. But just the idea of using it against a person is horrifying. I lay low, praying to God that he hadn't seen me. It wouldn't make sense if he could, though. It's practically pitch black out here. Or at least, that was my logic. Seconds felt like an eternity as I waited. Ten minutes, guys, now left. For the footsteps and the leaves to move elsewhere. Sorry and about that, guys, sorry. All I heard was... The sound of a foot hitting one of the wooden planks on the ladder of the tower. I felt the entire tower vibrate and shake as there were two more steps moving up the ladder. At this point, I was asking myself deep down, am I going to be able to shoot someone? But for some reason, whoever was down there decided not to climb all the way up, as I heard them jump back down to the forest ground and began dragging the sack away. I think I stayed frozen like a statue for at least ten minutes before even peeking over the ledge again. The coast seemed clear. I had to get home and warn the police immediately. I hopped over the ledge and descended down the ladder. I turned on my pocket flashlight, which in hindsight was a stupid move concerning the situation, and ran back in the direction of my house. I was only able to run for about ten seconds or so when I heard the rapid, manic footsteps crunching the leaves from behind me. I took a look over my shoulder, and there he was, inches. I spun around and shot him in the shoulder. I stopped and screamed in agony, and I took that moment to finish my dash to my house. Again, in hindsight, I should have held him hostage somehow, but that doesn't even matter now. I called the police, who showed up within 15 minutes with a whole search squad, and I led them all into the woods to the exact location where I shot him. There was a faint yet noticeable blood trail spilled onto the leaves which led past the body bag, which the cops seized, and eventually right to the maniac, who was hiding under a log next to a tree. He was arrested and tried for the murder of Jin Quen Sakanaki, a Japanese corner store owner. I don't know the full story behind it, but I do know I won't forget this one for the rest of my life, and I'll also be telling it for the rest of my life. I'll never forget left. the time me and my brother snuck out past our bedtimes to explore an allegedly haunted house down the block. Yes, I said bedtime, because I was only 10 oh my and my brother Luke was only 12. Ago. When our parents said goodnight to us, I went to Luke's room and we took a couple hand-powered flashlights with us and hopped outside through the window. Luckily, his room was on the first floor. Those hand-powered flashlights worked by constantly pushing in a little trigger that would create light inside the lens. They were noisy as hell, but they were convenient. Once we were outside, we just walked down the block, and in two minutes we were there. It was rumored by all the neighborhood kids and teens that the place was haunted. Everything about it was creepy. The older, more antique design of the house, the isolation from the rest of the houses, and the broken windows and rotting wood. It seemed perfect for a horror movie. We went around to the backyard. This was all my curious and confident brother's idea. 
I was scared. The door was locked, as expected. My oh, no, no, no. Thinking we might just go home. But my brother made a shocking move next. He grabbed a plank of wood laying in the grass and began smashing the already chipped window. Eventually, there was enough of an opening to unlock it and slide it up completely. We hopped inside and began cranking those noisy-ass flashlights. Immediately after entering the house, we both picked up on the fact that there was a um, degrees in there. Light, it, was light. it was a September night in the mid-70s. There was no graffiti or anything anywhere. In fact, it was relatively empty besides a few pieces of furniture that were clearly not worth taking along. It seemed we were the first to enter the house, shockingly, or at least from the back. We went upstairs to the main floor from the little den area and continued cranking the flashlights. That's when we heard the slightest crack in the floorboards from right above us. We both jumped. I tugged for Luke to leave, but he told me the place is old as hell. It's just house noises. I stopped cranking the flashlight at this point, and I urged Luke to do the same, but he only called me stupid for suggesting something so ridiculous. Then there was another crack in the floorboards from above us. He began walking upstairs. How noises! I didn't want to go up there, but I was not about to stay down there alone. I followed behind mm -hmm, him to the upstairs. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's a good there idea, was a door boys. that led to a room right above where we were standing. I begged him not to open it, but he must have just wanted to be the big, tough older brother. He began to reach for the doorknob while still cranking the noisy flashlight, but then he stopped. I was confused. I could see in the dark he was moving his ear up against the door, listening for something. Silence. Then, the most deafening, nightmare-inducing moment of my life. A single bang on the door from the other side sent my brother staggering into the wall in pain, covering his ear. We dropped the flashlights and ran straight out the back door and back home. We were so loud when we got back that our parents found us out. We told them what happened, but they naturally didn't care and grounded us both for a week. Oh my God. Two nights later, I woke to the sound of something from outside my window. And a glare of brightness sneaking in through my slightly open blind. I sat up, and my heart sank when I realized it was the sound of the crank to my flashlight. I stood up and looked out the window, and that's when it stopped. There was nothing but complete blackness out there after that. I woke the next day barely remembering what happened, and I still hope today that that part was just a dream. Mm. This story took place a long time ago, back in 2002, when Craigslist was in its early years. Many wouldn't know, but back in those days, Craigslist was a lot different. It was a lot more so an online garage sale, or just a place where people would list old things that still had some value that they were willing to give away. I got a basketball hoop, a hockey net, and a spoiler for my car, all free in perfect condition in that same year. You'd be lucky if you found something like that these days. Anyway, me and my son were dying to buy a hockey net so we could practice in the cul-de-sac we lived in. For the record, this was before I got that free one I mentioned. Wouldn't you know it, on Craigslist there was an ad for a slightly used regulation size hockey goal for only $50. It came with a puck and two slightly used hockey sticks. Not bad. I still have a picture of Not that ad to this day. Bad. It seemed like the perfect deal, but he lived about two hours away. I called the number he had listed, and flipping. he sounded pretty normal on the phone. Hockey he had a pretty deep, dark hockey. voice, but nothing Go. that would be off-putting. So I remember his voice being a bit emotionless. He agreed to meet halfway due to the distance, said he'd put the stuff in the back of his pickup truck. He said he could only come after he got off from work, though, which was much later in the day, way past dark. We agreed to meet at some rest stop off the highway. Me and my son, who was 11 at the time, took my wife's minivan, the only car that would be able to fit that huge thing. Within an hour, we were at the truck stop, which was empty at this hour, but was decently lit by three big light posts. 
I parked right under one of the lights and waited. A pickup truck pulled in off the highway right on time. He stopped right in front of me. I went over to his window, but then noticed there was nothing in the back of his truck. You Steve? He asked me. Yep, that's me, I said. Alright, my buddy's bringing in the stuff for his truck. The guy pulled up behind my car and put it in park. Weird. I suddenly had a bad Shut feeling. Up. I told my son to get back in the car and lock every cahoots. door except mine. Two more pairs of headlights came off the highway into the lots. Surely enough, pulling oh, up sh- Not surprisingly at this point, there was no hockey equipment in either one of them. My heart was racing. I was worried. Not for me, but for my young son who I for some reason brought with me on this trip. A group of large men mixed with heavy set and muscular physiques stepped out of the two pickup trucks behind the first one. They eyed me from head to toe, giving that typical oh God, intimidation stare. Then this bald guy wearing sunglasses said in a deep voice, Where's the money? I instantly pulled out my wallet and handed it to him, begging him to just let me and my son go. He pulled out like a hundred dollars and was pissed, expecting more. He then sent two of his goons or whatever to get my son. At this point, I screamed and begged for him not to take him. One of the men broke the glass to the oh, weekend back door, fuck. and I vividly remember the disturbing, heartbreaking screams of my young son. What happened next was what I can only explain to be a miracle from God answering my prayers. A car was entering the lot from off the highway. All the men stopped and turned to look at it. As it got closer, my heart literally dropped in excitement as I saw it was a police car. The light suddenly began to flash as he got close enough to see what was going on. All of the men were back in their trucks within seconds, speeding off down the highway. Well, at least two of them. The truck in the back was caught immediately by the police car and got money stolen from him. I explained everything to them, and they got the men that were caught to rat out on the others surprisingly quickly. I guess luckily the guys in the back truck weren't very loyal to whoever their leader was, if they even had any type of leader. Believe it or not, I had a police escort all the way home to make me and my son feel safer. I don't want to get into all the legal stuff, but I'll just say that all those men all except for one was caught, for and I'm pretty sure that was the driver of the first pickup truck. Needless to say, my Craigslist days weren't over at that point, but I've always been much more protective of my son, and much more cautious of Craigslist meetings since then. Mmm. So, guys... That was our first reaction. Hi guys, so I'm back again from reacting that um reacting uh at that um video you just saw me reacting to then. I hope you enjoyed it guys. Um it was the first reaction video on this channel I've ever done. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if you like that video or not because um after this i don't know there might be a vlog after this or there might be because um guys i'm gonna there's some there's a little bit more of um a little bit more videos to react to um i've got quite a little bit planned um they're gonna be little videos now guys so so it's gonna be very rare where there's gonna be half an hour videos 40 44 minutes video so it's gonna be quite rare i just did a big video for the first time i don't know why but um yeah so the next videos could be three minutes up to 10 minutes so yeah 10 minute videos or 20 minute videos not as long but yeah so who like that video and um, the intros and outros are going to be quite short. I'll try and make them as short as I can. And um, yeah, I hope you like this video. And um, yeah, so see you in more vlogs to come. More cooking videos to come. More pranks to come. More challenge videos to come. All gaming videos. So yeah, hope you like this video. And as always, make sure to hit that like button. Hit it. Just hit the like button. Hit the hell out of it. And hit the subscribe button. Just hit the subscribe button. 
and we're got a lot of subscribers 40 got 43 subscribers now guys thank you for all of you thank you it means a lot to me all the subscribers and thank you for the love and support and i hope you like this video and as always I hope you like this video see you in more videos to come and as always peace out bye guys peace